Okay. My name's Ian Campbell. I'm one of the curators of Simply Curious. Uh, we had an event on the 5th of May 2017 to celebrate Delia's, what would have been Delia's 80th birthday. Uh, an important part of that event was a schools project that we were running for the couple of months beforehand. And uh, it culminated with a performance actually on the, on the day in, in Coventry Cathedral. Uh, and we got Tim to, to, to do that schools event for us. Uh, Tim's a music teacher in Coventry and also a talented musician in his own right. So exactly the right person to do that for us. So I've been teaching in schools for quite uh, about 15 years in primary and secondary schools here and there in Coventry and the West Midlands, uh, teaching music. Um, background kind of goes into kind of not being, um, I didn't start off being a teacher though. Um, started off in kind of really getting in, in interested in electronic sound and, um, and just how sounds are created and, and what sounds do to us as people when we hear them. Because I think it affects us. I think it has a long-term effect on us and I think it has a really significant and can be a very positive effect on us. Um, I think it's um, something that uh, touches us deeper than um, mere words. But it also has a special place in our minds, I think, in that it um, kind of takes us somewhere else. Um, but that somewhere else is um, kind of something that's inherent with us, that's, that's, that's built up over a kind of millennia of, of our kind of all sphere of listening, our kind of consciousness of all sounds. We, we both grew up in the, in the 70s, we're, we're, we're the same age, and we both grew up in the 70s, and it was at a time when uh, sound was very experimental. Uh, it was a great time to be young and, and you know, experiencing sound and music for the first time. For me, the, I'm not sure which was my first experience of sound, but one of them was definitely a piano um, because of the, the, the lower notes and the way when you hit the note, it just stays there and it kind of, it doesn't stay in the same, it isn't the same note that it started when you hit mm. it. In the same way, analog synths aren't the same note when you start. When, you, when they start, mm. they evolve into something else. In the same way as if you record a sound on tape, it doesn't stay that pitch. It's never going to stay at 440 mm. somewhere. That pitch is not going to stay the same. But it's controlled by so many different factors over time. And, and you can use that. You can use the fact that you know, sound it, itself is transient and mm. you can actually exploit that. And that, this is what these guys were doing in the 70s. They were, they were taking conventional sounds and they were, they were recording them in, in the way that we would sample them nowadays. And, and intentionally and purposely manipulating that sound to, to yeah, change can, it and to yeah, yeah. Uh, and evolve it into other things. And, and I think, I mean, I certainly picked up on that. I mean, I, I can't remember the first time I heard the work of the BBC Radiophonic, for instance, but I do remember as a very, very young child, uh, you know, listening to those or watching those programmes for mm. schools and colleges and, and, and hearing this music, which was, which was just absolutely baffling. You, you had, it, it, it was a struggle to realise what had generated it. Or where it came and from. Where it what come it was. from. And, and it, was, it, was, yeah. it was challenging in that way. And, you know, I'm sure some people would have listened to it and, and given it no more yeah. thought. But I remember as a small child starting to wonder how it was created and, yeah. and, and how it was manipulated and realising quite quickly that, uh, that there, there were people creating this incredible, these incredible sounds. And you know, with the sounds making music out of it, and I think that's where my interest in it grew from. And you know, as I grew older and, and you know could afford synthesizers, started to buy them and, and started to to mm. experiment myself. Because uh, by then, by the time I was a teenager, synthesizers was the way to do that. Was the way to create the music that these people yeah, had done. Commercially available synthesizers. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Things had moved on, and, and you know what what they would have laboured for hours and days over in the sixties and early seventies, yeah. creating on tape. Too. If we go back to uh, it was sort of autumn last year, I think it was 
July, August, September last year, we we decided to uh, we decided to do the the Deliophonic event, and uh, and yeah, we started to talk about what that would be, where it would be, and who who we could invite to play. And very quickly, I suggested that we do a schools project because it, it's something that, that Synth Curious had always wanted to do. I know it's something that Sarah from the Tin had always wanted to do. And it just, it seemed perfect. It just seemed absolutely ideal that it was a way of, uh, you know, educating people about Delia, introducing people to Delia's work. And, and by using some of the methods that she would have used or, you know, the modern day equivalent of that, we could actually, you know, roll this out, you know, take it into schools and, uh, and, and have some fun with it. The nature of... The nature of Delia's kind of uh, back catalogue of music, when you play that to children now, um, it's a very, very different sonic sphere to the environment they're born into. And the environment that the internet kind of... that they're all kind of constantly connected to develop, has developed for them. Um, it's a very kind... It, it really does help you, it reminds you how much of a focus Delia has on a very personal and um, inward-looking nature of electronic sound in many mm. ways, I think. Mm. They were confused as hell. And, um, but when you connect it to, 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 to kind of contemporary musical terms, like you were saying, like hip-hop and mm -hmm. other stuff, and, and, and kind of the way that this is integrated into modern recording culture, it's, it's staggering that they don't know who she is, mm. who Delia is. Um, it's See, we, 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 artists, we've discussed but, that. We, we've discussed... Uh, you know, in order to make, you know, kids nowadays understand it more, you've got to make it relevant to what they know. So I, th I think electronic music is a great vehicle to do that because I think if you, if you can trace the music they're listening to today back through hip-hop, yeah. through what was happening in, in the 80s and back to the 70s... But this kind you can, of you can see, lineage almost. Absolutely. Yeah, lineage you you, can, see, sound, you yeah. can see the origins of where it came from, that it came out of... of electronic music and, and you know people took that and took it in lots of different directions and I think it's I think that which is fantastic I think I think it's great that yeah. there's this whole umbrella yeah. that actually is electronic music which, which has been which has been taken lots of different directions but the uh, from the sessions I was involved in with the, the, the school sessions I think it was great to because if, if you play something to somebody you know they may understand it they may not but if they actually record it themselves they can hear the raw yeah. material and then you, you can manipulate it in front of them and they've still got that, that raw material as a benchmark. Mm. So, you, you know, you can say, okay, we're now going to play it backwards. So all of a sudden they now understand what it sounds like when you play it backwards and what it sounds like when you slow it down and speed it up. So I think to actually have them sat there with a sound that they've created, with it being manipulated in real time just for them, really gave them an, an, an appreciation yeah. of what could be done. And it show, it's a good point, because it shows them where the starting point is as well. The, the very, the Which very you don't get from a finished piece of music. Exactly, yeah, because yeah. you hear the end result. Mm -hmm. And they really enjoyed it, because they could find a sense of rhythm and uh, an attachment with the sounds. Attachment, that's, that's a really, really important word. It's, it, very quickly, you would find that the, that the kids would want to own the sounds yeah. that they'd created. That was, re that was a really, really yeah. great thing that I took out of it. And, and, you know, at the end of a session, we would always have a, like a, 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 a mini performance of, you know, using the sounds that had been created that day and, and, and got, you know, got the kids to, you know, just jam along together. And we, we would be there yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to, to, uh, to get things started. But very quickly, you would have people wanting to to play the sound that they'd created. And that's wonderful. That, that's yeah, them really yeah. genuinely buying into what they were doing. And the change of the sounds as well. They, um, the, the way that things change from their original sonic state mm. and then they become what they, they ended up being, it's, um, I think it's fantastic children to, to see that from start to finish. Absolutely. Like, and understand it. And the, the other important thing is that they made sure that we're, all, we're always using free software. So the software they're using, I um, can't remember the, the TX81Z Im imitation of that uh, very classic old sampler. I'd prefer to in a classic old archive sampler because it's a bit easier to use for me. But the free software on, on as VSC instruments and um, free... Um, 
audio recorder software with Reaper and that, it, it just makes everything very accessible because it, it seems that these days you've, you've got to plough a lot of money into audio gear. You always mm. have that, I think, and for music as well. But I think one of the, the important things about the computers and digital world is that it opens it up to everyone. And, and we, 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 pur software. we purposely chose mm. uh, software which is free. Uh, so just, which you just, just really download, open it so up to everyone involved. Yeah. If you've got a real sort of bit of an old clunky laptop, it doesn't matter. You can still load the software on and get on with mm -hmm. doing something. We're just creating something that's that's, that's sonically your own. And um, but I do remember. I remember a session we did where we. You know, it was actually one of the very very few actual instruments that we used in the sessions. But we had a cymbal, and we, you know, we were hitting it in the conventional sense with a drumstick. But very quickly. And again, the kids were driving this, you know, very quickly they wanted to hold the symbol differently. They wanted to hit it with metallic objects and everything. And they were driving it very quickly. They, they were, you could see that they were challenged and, and they, were, they were looking for, for ways of making that symbol sound different to what it normally yeah. would. We had, I think we had four, we had four schools involved. And uh, so obviously we had, the, we had the sounds loaded up. We had, we had mini keyboards. We also had trigger pads, and I think we had seven or eight of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, which, well, you know, obviously. Six, wasn't it? it's, it's three of the. Um, three pads. Akai trigger pads. Yeah. And then three of the Akai actual keyboard cables, yeah. like, like a proper keyboard. Yeah. And, uh, and we, yeah, we, we, we invited the schools up one at a time, and uh, obviously they were playing the sounds that they had created, and we'd, e we'd even labelled the keyboard so that we could actually yeah. give. We could we could give the, the the pupils the sounds that they had actually created themselves, yeah. which again was, was really important to them and, and to us as well. So yeah, because they, they they continue each each of the sessions. The, the pr each of the sessions built up because each time we'd be recording sounds, then they'd be playing with those sounds. Each of the sessions built up over over a period of time to be kind of workshops in that they would be performing and using these sounds. It's kind of grown pretty used to them and how to control them and use them as a as as a sound. Um, collectively as a little group as well. So the, the, um, each of the performances were each definitely their own, weren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. It was definitely focused on what they had created and recorded. Um, and like you say, e each, of the, each of the pads were loaded with sounds that those pupils yeah. had created. So and been manipulated over the time, yeah. like, over long yeah. periods of... Um, and then um, it was really about... Because, uh, I mean, me, me and Tim were involved in the actual performances and we... Because we, we were kind of conscious of that... You know, we we thought, well, what happens if we get there on the day and just yeah. nothing happens? Yeah, nothing, nothing. To, but we we were actually worried about nothing when it when it came yeah. to it. They they were all. You've got to push the snowball for it to start. Exactly, right? and, it, and, and uh, it doesn't, doesn't happen. But, but very quickly, you know, yeah. they they were all involved, and, and we'd kind of taught them to. Because no, none of it none of it was rehearsed in that sense. There was no actual music pre-rehearsed music that they were performing, uh, what, we'd, what we'd sort of said to them is, and again, this is something we were teaching, we were teaching them to listen to what was, what was around them. We were saying, you know, listen to what's being played and respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. So it was very much about, you know, teaching them to listen, encouraging them to listen, and then yeah, making their own yeah, contribution yeah, yeah. To, 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 that, to that sea of sound that, that was being created. And that, again, I think that's something that, that work really well, and I think yeah. that worked because again, one of the one of the early conversations we had was relating to, you know, we've got to create the sounds, we've got to manipulate the sounds, we've got to write some music, and then we've got to teach them to play it. And very quickly, it became we we, we realised that the best way to do it was to focus on the sounds mm. and focus on the manipulation of the sound, and then on the day that we would have a performance that was really. Uh, a celebration of the sounds that they'd created and it was about listening to how things were evolving and, and asking them to contribute their own sounds on top of that. And I think it worked really well. I think I think it was I think it was a more natural thing to do. I think we I, I, I think there would have been a level of discipline brought to it that would have been negative had we tried to actually compose a piece of music yeah, and, yeah. and get them to yeah, play a, it. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's strange isn't it, when you're working with sounds, you, know, you don't sort of compose it, do you? It sort of happens. And you kind mm. of, it's, an, it's an element of response to what takes place at all yes. times, isn't it? And that's very cagey and, yes. and, and stock and that, that's, that's the direction we went in. It was yeah, very yeah. much a case of, 
you know, we're going to create some sounds, we're going to, we're going to play those sounds, and we want you to Mm. respond to what you can hear. And and as a musician, it's response as well, because most, some some, some people when they're playing the music instrument, you get get them all playing in the room together, and it's like, they're all playing, it's like, um, they're all playing these pieces that fit together. They know they fit together, and it fits together, and it's all right. But with the kind of thing we were doing, it's like, there isn't anything to fit together, and the, the, the models, that, the, 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 the mental ideals that they've got, I, the ideals that they've got, sonic ideals that they've got with creating this mental model of, of music um, is totally different mm. for, 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 for the kids. So it's... it's we, were, we, were, we were trying to free up their... We were trying to break down some of their musical ideals yeah. that they would have had and, and just get them to take and a free approach to it. And yeah. responding as a musician is... is the, is the kind of working as a team in a group of people is in response to the sounds that you hear was was really important in it as well because that's helped them to develop a musical and a musical understanding of I'm not really playing an instrument but but it is an instrument because it's a sound source that you're creating and manipulating but you take away the instrument itself and the kids are playing the sounds.